So hello, this is my Scooby-Doo tier list, and I'm a bit of, of a dummy head. Um, I thought I was recording when I was not, and I'm too lazy to go back and repeat what I said and put these guys back in place. So we're going to work from the, the bottom up to see who's that. But first off, I'm going to get the intro over with. This is my tier list. Uh, this is based on how much I like the characters, not really how much of a point they play into the plot, because some obviously do, and they're ranked lower. So, yeah, um, I'll, I'll go over what all the tiers mean to me. Who is, I don't remember them from the show. I haven't seen this incorporated in like a year, so I just don't remember some of these characters. D is, I thought, as I thought, they, they were kind of like bad and boring. C minus is they weren't necessarily boring, but I, I didn't really care for them. C is they filled their role okay. They're not great by any means. C plus is I actually like them. B is I enjoy them and and value them quite um, and see them as a fun part of the show. B plus is, is I think they they show us more and give us more character and are and actually give me excited to see the show a is is what it means to me to be a great character really fun really good and s is that they add more to the show and just make it more like way more of an enjoyable experience for me so but i was on her so let's put her back everyone so who, I don't remember these two characters. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I kind of remember her, but I don't really, I forget what she does. So she goes in here. Then we get D, um, which is these characters. I mean, I guess sorry about that with a little bit of tech technical difficulties, but I believe I was, I was on these two. They go in D, um, they were boring. I, I, Almost conflicted to say who, but I remember she was like a singer. <laughs> just really basic, I don't know. And this one, I don't know. I just have a personal hatred for this character that I even forgot her name. I just know that Scooby Doo's love interest, which kind of takes away from the Shaggy and Scooby Doo dynamic. So I placed them in D. These two, um, they're kind of just here for the, the memes. They're okay. They're not great by any means, um, but they. They get their job done, and I like their running gag, but they were, they're fine, they're okay. Uh, Daphne's sister is actually more useful than her, so they get put into C minus. I just don't really know where exactly I want to put them because we don't see a lot of them, so C minus is fine. Uh, Shaggy and Scooby's parents, they're fine. I mean, they did their job well. They sent my boy Shaggy to a military school and they did him dirty. So, which is why they're going to C minus. They don't do that to my boy Shaggy. This just is kind of a simp. So, question that in C minus here. I thought that the dynamic with his mom was kind of cool and how they did that, but that wasn't even him. That was his mom. So, C minus is fine. This just this man. Um, so, he annoys me because he was presented as Daphne's boyfriend and makes Fred kind of a simp for a minute for Daphne. And it turns out to be one of the main, uh, not one of the main villains, but one of the monsters. So that adds a bit more to him. You know, he should, he should be like right here. But to me, he bugs me for a different reason. He bugs me because he is the character that decided to because once they break up Daphne goes back to loving on Fred which will get in more and actually cover Daphne but she uh he almost I want to say ruined her but kind of set her back to square one which really annoyed me um these are from the cartoon they watch they're they're fine or whatever Daphne's dad is I mean I, I like when he got pissed off in that one episode with the with the dragons and stuff, but it's fine. This dude's just, all, all these people are basically fine. Um, I liked the episode with this guy, 
when he's trying to, I think he's trying to become mayor and and the jewel episode, if you want to be in such a think his son actually becomes the guy driving the semi truck. I could be wrong though. He, he's fine, you know, he's whatever. Daphne's mom, I give more leeway because we saw an entire episode of her with the vampire episode. So I I like her. She's fine. Uh, this guy I just had on here for the memes. He's just kind of funny. I don't know. I, I, he, it's not even that he makes me laugh a lot. It's just I, I enjoy him more than I should. The fact that he he um, he's the main clam guy was actually a suspect in one of the episodes, I think, for the, for the jewels. Um, it's, it's funny, and uh, he's fine by any means. He's okay. He's up here because uh, I'll, I'll go over him again real quick. He's basically just he did more and kind of functioned more than these characters, so I have to kind of put him there. See, so this person's fine. I I don't know. I I I think for, for being Fred's mom and Fred's parents aren't really used in general too much. I don't think that they're really that great or cool. I, I like the fact that they're villains. It doesn't betray you know the entire mystery incorporated gang as being saints. But again, I'm also kind of annoyed because out of all the members of the mystery incorporated gang, one we see them literally everybody except for Cassidy is a villain. You know. Yeah, basically everybody except for Cassidy is is a villain, and we just get to her, and she's also a villain for Winston. So she's she's just a watered down, mediocre return villain. So she's fine. Uh, Bella's mom actually, I would say, does stuff and contributes a decent amount and helps the mystery crew and has kind of fun little tongue in cheek conversations with Velma. So. I like him more than I should. Um, and she's also, you know, more than a third character. But so I put her in C. She's cool. You know, whatever. C, C plus. So the mermaid shows up and becomes Vilma's friend and actually helps her with, with one of the quests, uh, with one of the mysteries. And I, 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 I like the episode more than I should. I think it just, it's a fun dynamic to see Velma interacting with somebody other than the Mystery Incorporated gang and, and Hot Dog Water. So um, I think the mermaid's a bit better than our, like, than our kind of average basic characters. Of course, she helps Velma and she contributes to that mystery. I don't think we see her much after that, but I, I, I don't know. I like more than I should. The new mayor. So the new mayor is literally only on here because I think her relationship with the sheriff is really funny. And I think what they have going on there, uh, it honestly made me laugh and I enjoy it more than I should. But I just think, hey, these guys are pretty pretty funny, I would say. Um, and I, I kind of like her personality. You know, she's, she's an actual good person, which I like. And I, I, I think that that bolsters her into at least C+. Plus. So this guy, um, he's the enforcer of Mr. E. Now, I will admit, once Mr. E and the and the group gets in at, and the whole thing about the original mystery gang gets revealed, you get he's not as intimidating because that mystery of Mr. E isn't there. But he is really cool in the fact that when you see him in the in like season one, you have you have a feeling that something is going down. That something important to the plot is happening and that he is the enforcer he is the bringer of plot you know he is the official plot mover so i think it's better than our average character because we get to see him like interact with the gang a bit more and kind of um help help pull the strings so in later episodes so i think c plus is fine Fred's dad i mean i should honestly put him back here i don't know um so for being the parent of Fred, I also only have him here for the fake Fred. I just thought that was kind of funny and cool. So I, well, I said he could basically go to Fred's mom, but I, I don't know. Um, the, the only reason they are bolstered is because of the fact that fake Fred exists. And because of that fact, I had to, I had to bolster them a, a little bit. 
the sheriff, uh, the sheriff is honestly, in my opinion, one of the more enjoyable characters in the show. Um, the fact that, the fact that he, <sighs> the fact that he almost serves as the antagonist of the show, like a very minor antagonist, because the sheriff doesn't really want to, you know, mess with the kids, but he he abides by the law. He is the sheriff, so he will go out and arrest the kids because they are breaking the law. And he also has some funny bits, and I think it was the Ghost Cowboy episode. I thought he had some funny bits there. And I, I, I just enjoy him more, and his uh, and, and the guy who does his voice actor, I'm blanking on his name, but he delivers some really good dialogue and really makes me enjoy his character more, and his, his line delivery is so good for him. So see here, fine, also hopefully it looks like J. Jonah Jameson. I just got done watching Invincible, so yeah, he goes and see a boss. Uh, this dude, okay. So <clears throat> the original mayor, Fred's adoptive dad, I think it's pretty cool. The fact that when we first see him, we see a normal, basic, you know, mayor, he just wants to run for mayor. He He's kind of buddy-buddy with the sheriff, and he doesn't want Fred to do his mystery thing because it makes him look good. But then you learn that he's actually more than that. You learn that he drove the original mystery incorporated gang um, out and basically was one of the main reasons that they got dismantled, which I thought was really cool. Um, he is just... I, I don't know why, but what he did and how it's presented, it really makes you feel like he was a good final season one villain. And and the monster he plays, you feel you feel that he gets he's in, intimidating in a sense because you don't know who that monster is. And and the build-up's just done really well. And it, he is truly just in, intimidating, you know, he's just really well done. Um, and I just think he's, he's good enough and better than our average character that he goes into B. All right, Scooby-Doo. So my opinions on Scooby-Doo have changed, okay. Uh, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy together are the best character in the show, there's no doubt. They uh, their duo is better than any team or, you know, duo in the entire show, in the entire Scooby-Doo franchise. But um, Scooby, I bumped up because he is the poster child and he has, what though, Raggy, is such a iconic line and phrase. And, and I was talking to a friend and he made me, you know, I, he made me, remember that phrase and it put it just a smile on my face you know um i kind of like what they did with with his girlfriend um not necessarily you know that like i don't like her as a character but i like that they tried to have him care for somebody besides shaggy I like what they tried to do with that and the fact that he feels a certain responsibility to find her and you know uh, take care of her. I, I think it was kind of cute. And he also has some, some of the funniest lines in, in the series. Um, when he catches Velma and Shaggy smooching and and he asks Shaggy if he's if he's cheating on him, I laughed way too hard. So yeah, I feel like D plus is a good place for him. Fred, Fred, Fred. So initially I'll put Fred in my A tier in my Daphne's one video. But here's what happened. I, I talked to the same friend, friend who told me about um, about Scooby Doo, and he told me this point: Who is the guy who goes out and tells the group to split up and causes you know misfortune on them? And you want to know what? He is right, but he also has enough character for me to only notch him down to B plus. In reality, he's not a great leader, you know, but. He goes out and makes a trap 
for the monsters. And those traps, those are some of the funnest parts in the show because you see how wacky and ludicrous they are. So when you watch this, you really enjoy Fred and what's going through his mind. And I think his relationship with the rest of the group, it's it's not great. You know, he's his personality, I wouldn't say is flat, but it's not it's not gonna bolster him anywhere. But it's just fun to watch. So I think B tier is fine. Uh, B plus tier is where I would put him. He has a lot of a lot more character than Nomi does in Scooby Doo Incorporated compared to the rest of the cast. But that from in B plus tier above Scooby Doo. So Alice May, um, I really enjoy Alice May, and here's why. In season, she's a, she appears in season one of episode six, and she moves the plot forward. And you really sense that, oh, wow, things are things are going down, right? So at the start of the episode, you see Alice May, and she's already revealed to, to be the monster, which is really weird, right? Because normally the monsters are at his cheesy, ha-ha, oh, oh, you stupid meddling kids, whatever, right? But she appears on the scene and goes out and and plays it dumb, right? And acts like she's at, at the school, but like a normal person. And I want to say it's Daphne that she tries to, tries to, uh, is suspicious of her only because of Fred. And, you know, she's taking Fred to the dance. So, but when you see her and you realize, oh, wow, she's the daughter of one of the monsters that Mr. Incorporated got, you have a feeling of, of like, I would almost say remorse for her because you understand where she's coming from. She views it as Mr. Incorporated gang ruined her life. They, you know, shipped off her father. And so she wants to follow in his footsteps. And, and I thought that her motivations were a lot more, I would say, like clear, clear cut and fun. And the fact that she also does more after season one with trying to hunt down, I think it's the Mr. Incorporated gang or Professor Pericles, maybe it's both. Um, and in that like uh, in that gas mask suit and stuff, I, I thought w was really cool too. She's just done well, and I I wish we saw even a bit more of her because I, I just like her. I, I thought I thought she was the first like, and then at the end when you realize, oh wow, she's working with Mister E. It makes you appreciate not not only Mister E more, but her knowing that she has connections with one of the main mysteries of the show till that point. You know, it's just she's. She's really fun in the mystery and ooh that she brings. Puts her in A tier. All right. Almost some revealing. Mr. E. Mr. Mr. E. So what can I say about Mr. E? When we first see him, you have a feeling of mystery. This is from Mr. Incorporated. I got to ask him that. And <clears throat> this is my mystery. All right. He arrives on the scene. And he leaves these notes, okay? And these are clues for Mr. Incorporated. And you always feel like that he is almost smarter and more planned out and that he is truly like one step ahead of Mr. Incorporated gang. And then you learn, oh, wow, he's basically dark shaggy, you know? And and I, I don't know, I like Mr. Eve and I, I should. Yeah, I, I like him more than I probably should, but I think that the, the element of mystery and the and the moment and the things he shows with his personality and the cards and his relationship with Professor Pericles and that he is the first, I would say, like, true from the start antagonist of the show. That's, I, I like Alice May a lot, but and, and, and she's really good for what she's doing, but Mr. E's the one who started it all, right? He's the, he was the first lore of, of mystery in that show that, that made me fall in love with Mr. Incorporated. So he goes in A tier. Professor Pericles. Now, I did just say that Mr. E is the, is the first true one, but Professor Pericles is the ultimate manipulator slash antagonist. He goes out. Right. The, the, well, let me re rewind the clock back a little bit. Right. First time we see Professor Pericles. Okay. He's locked up in jail. 
and this entire room dedicated to him. And you have a feeling that the way that they set him up to make him intimidating actually works quite well. And then you see him start doing things. You see him start taking puzzle pieces. You see him start... And you see him start being feared not only by Mr. Incorporated, but by the original Mr. Incorporated. And you feel like that that he and his intelligence is really probably the first in the show. And he kind of, he's the true, true showing of the manipulator slash antagonist of this show. And you just learn more about him and you enjoy him more. And the episode with Aphrodite and him and Scooby-Doo trying to find a, a cure for the love potion is one of my, you know, favorite episodes. It's really well done, and I just enjoyed it a lot, you know? So I feel like that the top of A tier is, is pretty well-deserved. Okay, we're getting close here. Velma, Velma, Velma. Velma's done pretty darn well on the show. Like I said before in my, in my Daphne video, she, um, you can list a lot of characteristics of Velma off the top of your head. I think that Jinkies is probably my second favorite line behind behind Rut Row because it's it I don't know I, I just like it more than I should and she she really just adds something to the the show and you feel like that that if it she's probably the second most valued person in this way, in the and the crew, right? I think that Fred's more, I don't know, I think she might be the most valuable because she, she's more detective-like and more thought out than Fred. And she solves mysteries and other, she works on the more de detective side slash technology side. And you can really tell that she bolsters the show in a good way. And she shows everybody what a Scooby-Doo character can be, you know. And, and I just enjoy her more than I should, to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie. And her, her, her relationship with Shaggy is done really well. I, I like that he gives Shaggy a ultimatum. And then even once Shaggy wants to date her again, she says no. I think that was a really good character moment, you know. It's just, if, if I had more time to think and probably think of more things I like about Mystery uh, about her, Mr. Incorporated. If I rewatch Mr. Incorporated, I'll probably find a lot more things I like about her, but she definitely belongs in S tier. 100%. Okay. So her. Um, I can't remember her. She's supposed to be like super duper smart, and she's young. And I think she has like a cough in her voice or something. I, I, I don't know, something like that. Um, she's. She's fine. I mean, right? She's okay. And I, to be honest, I just can't remember really what uh, a, a lot of what she did. So I, I think C C two is just fine. Cassidy, Cassidy, Cassidy. Uh, yeah, B here. B plus here actually. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> you first see Cassidy as the DJ's host, just kind of a friend of Mystery uh, of Mystery Incorporated, and then you realize that she's a lot more than that, and she shares a almost like her personality tells kind of tells the audience that she wants to get stuff done. And she's kind of hiding in the, in the shadows, you know, with her identity and stuff like that. And then, oh, here's also another thing I like about Velma, because, you know, I have to compliment her. The fact that she finds out who Cassidy is, who was part of the original and must have incorporated. I thought that was really cool, right? But Cassidy, um, she, I like her because it's, showing that the original Mystery Incorporated had hope in them, is what I'm saying. She's the first actually good member of Mystery Incorporated that's not, like, 
you know, evil. I mean, I think every other member of Mission Incorporated turned out to be a villain pretty much, but she turned on the side of, of good and wasn't influenced by by greed, which I just really enjoyed. And I think putting her in in B tier suit her just fine. I thought her character was really fun to watch and and I enjoyed it quite a bit, you know. I, I think B tier is perfect for her. Okay, I um I hardly remember this dude. Gonna be hundred percent honest. I remember he did things with with science. Um, almost when people put him into because I do remember him, but I don't remember him enough. I think this is one of the the villains for the potato chip bag thingy. Uh, I thought she was funny. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I if that is the villain that, that I'm thinking of, I I think it was cool how it kind of brought a subtle like. It kind of his audience. No, um, I I kind of like that she was trying to say something about pollution and stuff like that. I, I think that's cool. She's she's fine. I don't know. I don't remember you. I'm sorry, guys. I I, I just don't remember some of these characters. Um, I'm I'm gonna go Shaggy, and then I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about what really annoys me about these two. Okay, so Shaggy belongs right with his pal Scooby. Yeah, that's fine. So, Shaggy and Scooby together are better than any any one character, any group, any duo in the entire show. They're the best part of the show if they're together, which they are, and I really enjoy them. But on their own, Shaggy and Scooby's traits are kind of together, and what I said about Scooby can kind of be applied to Shaggy. I thought that. It's, it's really cute how he's trying to balance like Velma and Scooby at the start of of the show. I, I just I think that his dynamic with the group is also really good and that him and Scooby are are bait, which is which which I think is funny how they dress him up in, you know, in, in costumes and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, what is about Scooby and his characteristics about how, how he's hungry, he's he's determined, he's scared to go on the shaggy, you know, and um, B plus is fine. Okay. So here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Okay. Okay, guys. Do I know what really annoys me, right? I said in my Daphne's boring video that I, that I liked Daphne and Mr. Incorporated, that she got better after the Hex Skills episode. But then I remembered something, okay? I, I, I remembered something. All right, this this dude, okay, this dude dates Daphne, all right, which is like, whatever, cool, I don't even care, okay? But I don't, I don't know what really butters my popcorn, okay? It's when she ditches Fred, which I thought was cool, cool. In fact, I'm tempted to put her in, in C plus here, all right? It's, that's all they did. But no, they instead do it to where... She gets over Fred, dates a new guy, and then, and then this guy goes to jail. And guess, and guess what happens? She goes to Fred again. That kitchen development is flushed down the friggin' toilet, man. Why? Why would they do that? Why? They they took what they had and her getting over her boy crazy self. Which once again, what's her personality? Oh, boys. Oh, Fred. Well, guess what? They were going to change that, going to make that something more, and then they just shot, shot all over it, man. So what am I supposed to say, man? I'm just, I'm so annoyed. But what they did with her character, they just butchered her. They took her out back and, and hacked her head off with a chainsaw. They just, it annoys the crap out of me, man. She's worse than the friggin' Mortal Kombat movie. She, it's, it's, it's annoying. I just can't, man. Like, you, she's, she's, she. She annoys me, okay. And, and then here's why I have hot dog water here, okay. So, hot dog water. Uh, hot dog water, let's see here. See my stare. I don't know, actually. Yeah, yes. Yeah, see, too far. Okay. So, hot dog water, right? Goes out. She's one of the monsters, but then she joins Mr. Incorporated. And I forget why, but Daphne leaves Mr. Incorporated for a bit, all right? 
And in the intro of those episodes, and I think it was like one, one or two episodes, or any two episodes, right? Hot Dog Water takes place of Daphne. And that made me, made me realize, you can literally just take any female and slap her in the show, and nothing will be missed. I mean, sure, you know, as she's there to re- replace Daphne, and I would almost say that that she's more enjoyable than Daphne because she's actually, you know, an intelligent and not just a basic, a basic person, you know. And it's so obvious that Daphne's so boring that they're able to replace her with hot dog water, and nothing really changes. I mean, how how bad does it get? Do we have to get to that point? You know, it's the most blatant show of character assassination I've seen in a long time. Daphne. Could have been great, you know. I I thought it would have been really cool if she rose above her sisters and became something, something fun and, and exciting. I think it would have been really cool if, if she had to do something in the group. And guess what? She's she's not even bait. She's not even bait. It's Scooby and Shaggy because they can dress up in funny costumes and ha ha funny, huh? Yeah, you know. And Daffy's just so useless. Literally, I get more annoyed at watching Daffy than having to scrape gum off my shoe, man. It's just I can't, I can't do it. I can't deal with Daphne and Mr. Incorporated, you know? Every time I see her, I'm just like, oh, look, it's Daphne, you know? And then every time I see hot dog water, I'm like, oh, it's hot dog water, cool, you know? And and, and I like that she helped the Mr. Incorporated game. In fact, I think the Leon was kind of put it. Let's uh, top a seat here. Uh, I don't know why, actually. What am I doing? Yeah, this is fine. This is cool. So, yeah, guys, Daphne just got narrowed down, and she's terrible and smelly, okay? But here it is. Here's here's my tier list, guys. The official Scooby-Doo tier list. Um, I know you only have one person in S tier, but, you know, it's, it's Velma, which I think which I think is, you know, cool, cool, because she's the best character, um, these people here, I, I think are I think are really good. I really enjoy them. Um, these these people here um, is the majority of the Scooby Doo cast. I think they're really fun to watch, and I also enjoy them. Um, they add more more to the show. If I didn't have them, the, the show would be a lot more boring. But I don't think I think them together, you know, all with the show visually. So. Here, I think they were fun gimmicks and cool. Here are characters that I kind of want to see more of, but what we got with, with them, I'm fine. Here are just your borderline average characters, you know, just, or like whatever. Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember much about her. I remember she's she's young and she has like a spitball in the back of her throat, I think. I don't know. Um, and she, I think, think she tricks the kids with candy or something like that. She's kind of a child monster, whatever. Um, and then these, this is fine. And then this and yeah that no 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 big no big i can't man okay so here's the official tier list um if you disagree with me, feel free to put it down in the comments below. I feel like uh, I might change my opinion on some of these later on, but I think as they are, I think this is this is how I, at least I feel. I know my kids are a lot different than other people, but if that's all all we got, I feel like this this is a good point to to stop on. And as always, um, this is my yearly upload. I don't want to do the next video, but um, yeah, guys, have a good rest of your day.